Assalamu alaikum fam. Hope you're doing well. We'll continue our reading of the Jehovah's Witness version of the Bible. Very important to read something before you criticize it. And it also give us a more clear understanding, word by word, of what is contained within the Bible instead of just reading Wikipedia and being an armchair theologian. So let's dig into it. We're in Joshua chapter 16, picking up on verse 1. And the Lord came out for the sons of Joseph from the Jordan at Jericho to the waters of Jericho eastward, the wilderness going up from Jericho into the mountainous region of Bethel. And it went out from Bethel, belonging to Luz, and passed over to the boundary of the Archites at Ataroth. And it went down westward to the boundary of the Japhelites. <laughs> That's an interesting one. As far as the boundary of Lower Beth Horon in Gezer, and its termination proved to be at the sea, and the sons of Joseph, Manasseh and Ephraim, proceeded to take possession of the land. Okay. Sons of Joseph contends taking possession of the land, and the boundary of the sons of Ephraim by their families came to be, yes, the boundary of their inheritance towards the east came to be Atarothadar, as far as upper Bethhoron, and the boundary went out to the sea. Mitch Methath was on the north, and the boundary went around eastward to Taathnath, Shiloh, and passed over the eastward to Janoa, and it went down from Genoa to Ataroth and Naara and reached to Jericho and went out to the Jordan. From Tapua, the boundary moved on westward to the torrent valley of Cana, and its termination proved to be at the sea. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the sons of Ephraim by their families. And the sons of Ephraim had enclave cities in the midst of the inheritance of the sons of Manasseh, all the cities and their settlements. And they did not drive away the Canaanites who were dwelling in Gezer. And the Canaanites continued dwelling in among the Ephraim down to this day and came to be subject to slavish forced labor. Oh, <laughs> I didn't see that coming. Uh, hmm. Okay, now we're in chapter 17. And the Lord came to be for the tribe of Manasseh because he was Joseph's firstborn. Okay, so the tribe of Manasseh, Joseph's firstborn. For Machir, the firstborn of Manasseh, the father of Gilead, because he was one who proved to be a man of war. Oh, a man of war. Here we go. And Galid and Bashan came to belong to him. And there came to be a lot for the sons of Manasseh, who were left over according to their families. For the sons of Abizer, and the sons of Helek, and the sons of Asrael, and the sons of Shishem, and the sons of Hefer, and the sons of Shemeda, these were the sons of Manash, the son of Joseph. Okay. The males according to their families. As for Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, he proved to have not sons, but daughters. And these were the names of his daughters, Mahla, and Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Tizra. So they presented themselves before Eleazar, the priest, and Joshua, the son of Nun, and the chieftain, saying, Jehovah it was who commanded Moses to give us an inheritance in, let's see, the midst of our brothers. Accordingly, he gave them, at the order of Jehovah, an inheritance in the midst of the brothers of their father. And there were ten apart from the land of Gilead and Bashan, which were on the other side of the Jordan. For the daughters of Manasseh came into an inheritance in the midst of his sons, and the land of Gilead became the property of the sons of Manasseh who were left over. Interesting. 
the boundary of Manasseh came to be from Asher to Mitchmethath, which is in front of Shechem, and the boundary moved to the right to the inhabitants of Entapua, the land of Tapua became Manasseh's, but Tapua at the boundary of Manasseh belonged to the sons of Ephraim, and the boundary went down to the torrent valley of Cana, southward to the torrent valley of these cities of Ephraim, in the midst of the cities of Manasseh, and the boundary of Manasseh was on the north of the torrent valley, and its termination came to be at the sea. To the south it was Ephraim's, sorry, Ephraim's, and to the north Manasseh's, and the sea came to be his boundary, and the north they reached to Asher, and on the east to Issachar, and there came to belong to Manasseh in Ishahar and independent towns. Oh, wow, that's interesting. And Iblam and its dependence town and the inhabitants of Dor, and its dependence town and the inhabitants of Endor, and its dependent towns and the inhabitants of Ta'anach, and its dependent towns and the inhabitants of Megiddo, and its dependent towns three of the heights. And the sons of Manasseh did not prove able to take possession of these cities. But the Canaanites persisted in dwelling in this land, and it turned out that when the sons of Israel had grown strong, they went putting the Canaanites at forced labor. Oh, okay, so the sons the sons of Israel put the Canaanites to forced labor, and they did not dispossess them entirely. And the sons of Joseph proceeded to speak with Joshua, saying, Why is it that you have given me as an inheritance one lot? and one allotment, whereas I am a numerous people for the reason that Jehovah has blessed me until now. At this Joshua said to them, If you are a numerous people, go your way up to the forest, and you must cut it down for yourself, there in the land of Pezazites and the Raphaim, because the mountainous region of Ephraim has become too narrow for you. Then the sons of Joseph said, the mountainous region is not enough for us, and there are war chariots with iron cysts among all the Canaanites dwelling in the land of the low plain. Both those who are in Beth Shean and its dependent towns, and those who are in the low plain of Jezreel. So Joshua said this to the house of Joseph, to Ephraim and Manasseh, a numerous people you are, and great power is yours. You ought not to get one lot. But the mountainous region should become yours, because it is a forest, you must cut it down, and it must become the termination point for you. For you should drive away the Canaanites, although they have war chariots with iron scythes, and they are strong. So you should drive away the Canaanites. So they're really making a mention of the chariots. Now we're in 18, chapter 18, verse 1. Then all the assembly of the sons of Israel were congregated at Shiloh, and they proceeded to locate the tent of meeting there. Okay, so the tent of meeting. As the land was now subdued before them, but there were still left among the sons of Israel those who inheritance they had not apportioned out, namely seven tribes. So Joshua said to the sons of Israel, how long are you going to be delinquent about going and taking possession of the land that Jehovah the God of your forefathers has given you? So notice this. How long are you going to be before you actually take the land that God has given you? So God gives lands of inheritance. Allah, you know, also has the point of allowing the Prophet, peace be upon him, to have his time of war. So when Christians say, that our prophet, peace be upon him, was only a robber of caravans. Look how Jehovah here is letting Joshua and them and the sons of Joseph talk about taking possession of a land as inheritance. Finish for yourselves three men of each tribe and let me send them out, that they may get up and walk about in the land and map it out in accord with their inheritance and let them come to me, 
and they must apportion it among themselves into seven shares. Judah will keep standing on his territory to the south, and the house of Joseph will keep standing on their territory to the north. As for you people, you will map out the land into seven shares, and you must bring them here to me, and I must cast lots here for you before Jehovah our God. For the Levites have no share in among you, because of the priesthood of Jehovah is their inheritance. And Gad and Reuben and the half of tribe of Manasseh have taken their inheritance on the side of the Jordan, toward the east, which Moses, the servant of Jehovah, has given them. So the men got up that they might go, and Joshua proceeded to command those who were going to map out the land, saying, Go and walk about in the land, and map it out, and return to me. And here is where I shall draw lots for you before Jehovah in Shiloh. With that, the men went and passed through the land, and mapped it out by cities and seven shares in a book. After that, they came to Joshua at the camp of Shiloh. And Joshua went drawing lots for them in Shiloh before Jehovah. Thus Joshua there apportioned the land to the sons of Israel with their shares. Wow, interesting. So, the drawing of the lots. Then the lot came up of the tribe of the sons of Benjamin. Tribe of the sons of Benjamin. By their families. And the territory of their lot went out between the sons of Judah, sons of Judah, and the sons of Joseph. And their boundary came to be at the northern corner from the Jordan. And the boundary went up to the slope of Jericho. Slope of Jericho. On the north it went up on the mountain westward. And its termination proved to be at the wilderness of Bethaven. To the wilderness of Bethaven. And the boundary passed over from there to Luz. At the southern slope of Luz. That is to say, Bethel. And the boundary went down to Atarathadar. Upon the mountain that is on the south of the lower Bethoron. And the boundary was marked out and went around at the western side to the south from the mountain that faces Betharon to the south, and its termination proved to be at Kirathabal, that is to say, Kirathel Jarim, a city of the sons of Judah. This is the western side. Wow, so seven shares getting divided. We have the Jordan, we have Moses giving on behalf of Jehovah inheritance. We have the tribe of Manasseh. We have God and Reuben. Very interesting. Very interesting. The slope of Jericho, the wilderness of Bethaven, the slope of Luz, the river Jordan. Very interesting. The city of the sons of Judah. Very interesting. Okay, there we go. So, just a, another interesting note is how the war chariots are mentioned with their iron scythes. I wonder if those were the kind that you stick on the wheel and as it spins, if you are standing near it, it'll slice your leg off from the knee down. I wonder if that's the type of war chariot it's talking about.